1925, three men, led by British surveyor and geographer Colonel Percy Harrison Fawcett, entered the Amazon rainforest. Fawcett's ultimate goal was to find the lost city of Z, an ancient indigenous city he believed to have existed somewhere in the vast region, particularly in the jungle of Mato Grosso, Brazil. Although the city was likely something he formulated himself and doesn't exist in any other records known to previous explorers and archaeologists, Fawcett was adamant that such a city existed. Fresh from the throes of WW1, Fawcett was obsessed with the lost city of Z. And even after he served in the British Army, he returned to South America a few years later. In fact, Fawcett did a number of expeditions in the Amazon before and after the Great War culminating in the 1925 expedition he undertook. Confident that he would be able to find the lost city of Z, Fawcett only brought two of his most trusted companions, his own son, Jack, and the latter's best friend, Raleigh Rimmel. He even gave fake coordinates in his last known correspondence so as to deter any potential competition to the supposed monumental discovery. However, that would be the last anyone has heard of him or any of the party. Because in that same year, Colonel Percy Harrison Fawcett, along with Jack and Ramel, vanished without a trace in the vast, treacherous wilderness. To this day, nobody knew what became of them. While it does sound like a classic adventure tale that unfortunately ended in a tragedy, the story of Fawcett was among the several real-life accounts of individuals who were insisting that the Amazon was home to a grand civilization. In fact, the reason Fawcett became enthralled with his own idea of the lost city of Z was because he read stories about it. Sometime in 1914, Fawcett found an old text called Manuscript 512. Fawcett became fascinated by what was described in the 12-page manuscript. According to this account, a group of banderantes, a term used for explorers, slavers, adventurers, and fortune hunters in colonial Brazil, discovered a lost city in Bahia, a state in the east of Brazil. Seekers of the Lost City Like a few people before him, Fawcett took the tale to heart. Sir Richard Burton was also among them. Unfortunately, due to its dubious veracity and unknown origin, Many people thought it was nothing but either a hoax or an exaggerated tale. Whether it's factual or not remains to be seen, but the manuscript and of Fawcett's claims of a great civilization existing in the depths of the Amazon forest were just a few of the many, many tales of the same lost city, or cities. From the lost city of Z to El Dorado to the seven cities of gold, there is an abundance of stories about rumored ancient cities with vast wealth and interesting culture. But are any of these real? During the early days of European exploration in South America, Francisco de Orellana, a Spanish conquistador and explorer, managed to successfully sail the length of the Amazon River, despite the improbable odds. But perhaps the most intriguing story about de Orellana's expedition was about a sizable but unknown civilization in the Amazon rainforest. According to Gaspar de Carvajal, who chronicled the expedition in his work Relación del Nuevo Descubrimiento del famoso Rio Grande, que descubrió por muy gran ventura el Capitán Francisco de Orellana, which literally means in English as account of the recent discovery of the famous Grand River which was discovered by great good fortune by Captain Francisco de Orellana. Throngs of large cities and fortified towns existed along the great Amazon River. The cities had well-developed roads, sizable construction, and dense population. Meanwhile, the indigenous tribes were either friendly or wary of them. Fortunately, most were welcoming, and through these tribes, de Orellana, Carvajal, and the rest of their party received better food, lodging, and knowledge about the area. Sure enough, when de Orellana's ship exited the mouth of the Amazon River in the eastern part of South America, they successfully returned to Europe. Back in the Old World, de Orellana and the others recounted their tales that piqued the interest of many 
prompting a second return to the Amazon to find the indigenous tribes again. However, upon their landing, De Orellana was unable to find them. There were no large cities, no dense population, and no glorious civilization in the Amazon. It was as if they never existed at all, and everything they experienced was nothing but a fever dream. De Orellana reportedly died in South America, ill and grief-stricken. It goes without saying that people in the old world were sorely disappointed, and even condemned him to be a liar. For a very long time after the demise of De Orellana, and later on the fated expedition of Fawcett, everyone deemed the tales of ancient cities in the Amazon to be nothing but made-up stories. Many modern scientists even supported this, citing the sandy soil quality in the Amazon as being unsuitable for agriculture and building large settlements. However, this will change in 2022, when a group of scientists used new technology to survey a part of the Llanos de Mojos region in Bolivia and made a shocking discovery. That day, Orellana and Fawcett's claims of large pre-Columbian cities in the Amazon may, in fact, be true. The Mysterious Amazon Rainforest It was a widely held belief among scientists that the Amazon basin was simply a hostile environment for cities and towns to flourish. Besides the orange-colored soil being unsuitable for farming, the Amazon is an enormous 7 million square kilometers of a moist, broadleaf tropical rainforest which, at first glance, would be impractical to host any town, much less a large city. It's home to more than 2.5 million insect species, 2,000 birds and mammals, and also 2,200 fishes. Then, there are tens of thousands of plant species, some poisonous, some not, and the hundreds of amphibians and reptiles that also consider it as their home. It's easy to get lost, and it's also easy to get yourself killed, whether in the hands of hostile tribes exposed to the elements or wild animals. To say it's a dangerous place to live is an understatement. As such, the Amazon had been, for a long time, considered to be one of the last few places in the world untouched by humans since its formation around 56 to 34 million years ago. However, scientific discoveries made in the past few decades challenged that traditional view. One of the most important findings in recent times was that of the Kuikugu archaeological site in, wait for it, Mato Grosso, Brazil. Yes, the very same region where Fawcett believed the lost city of Z exists. The man behind this rediscovery was Michael Heckenberger, who, working alongside the Quikuro people, unearthed the remains of a total of 20 towns and villages near Chingu River in the Amazon rainforest. It was estimated that close to 50,000 people lived in these towns and villages, spread over a 20,000 square kilometer expanse within the rainforest. Unlike the Mayans and Aztecs, though, who built tall, vertical structures like their pyramids, the Kuhikigu built horizontal monuments to honor their guards, working within the constraints of the rainforest by building structures that could only be dwarfed by gigantic trees. The Kwikuro people knew about the particular city because it was preserved in the oral tradition, and it was thanks to them that a more serious search on the Amazon rainforest's possible civilizations was started. Then, in 1999, Brazilian professor and researcher Alceu Ranzi noticed earthworks, or large geometrical mounds called geoglyphs, in some areas in Acre, another state in Brazil. People also didn't pay much attention, despite the fact that these two discoveries might change, and did, what mainstream science knew and believed about the Amazon. Moreover, the question of whether other parts of the Amazon rainforest were inhabited still remained. Until 2022, when definitive proof of large-scale Amazonian settlements, not just one, but many, were found through LIDAR scans made on the rainforest. Uncovering an unknown civilization with the help of LIDAR. LIDAR is short of light detection and ranging, which is a remote sensing method utilized to collect data and study Earth's topography. It emits pulsed light waves, 
and measures the time it took for the light to bounce off back to the receiver to calculate the distance it traveled. Basically, one of its uses is to map the land using near-infrared lasers. In fact, some of this technology has been used to measure underwater elevations and penetrate large-scale rainforests. Using it on the world's largest rainforest isn't a simple task, but a handful of dedicated researchers, including Heiko Prümers from the German Archaeological Institute, undertook the seemingly impossible project. Boarding a helicopter and flying it above the Llanos de Moxos region in Beni Department, Bolivia, Heiko and his colleagues put the LIDAR to work. By remote sensing the area, the researchers discovered that beneath the thick canopy of leaves and vegetation were a significant number of settlements, including 24 smaller sites and two large sites, Kotoka and Landivar. While the scientists were already aware of the two settlements beforehand, it was only with the help of the LIDAR that they became aware of its massive size and complexity. The sites were described as having three concentric defensive structures, including moats and ramparts. Some of the walls were even doubled, suggesting sophisticated defensive systems. Civic ceremonial buildings were also found, including U-shaped structures and conical pyramids, with some as tall as 65 feet in size. From these sites, a network of well-designed causeways radiate outwards, possibly to other settlements in the same area. These settlements were attributed to the Kasarabe culture, which is said to have existed ever since 500 CE. Little is known about the Kasarabe culture at this time, but thanks to the continuous efforts in researching this civilization, we are starting to learn more and more about them. For instance, it was surmised that they are a sedentary culture, able to sustain themselves through agriculture and fishing. This was in contrast to the previously held beliefs that indigenous residents of the Amazon basin only lived through hunting and gathering. They also had sufficient systems and technology to make up for what they lack in terms of natural resources and topographical advantages. They built settlements that catered to the demands of their environment. So how did they survive with poor quality soil, with the use of dark earth, also known as terra preta? Terra preta is a dark soil that is very fertile and perfect for growing vegetation. While it's found in the Amazon basin, the majority of soil in the area is orange, infertile soil, which made scientists misjudge the area as unfit for living. It was even said that this miracle soil helped the indigenous people grow healthy crops. How Terra Preta was created is still a subject of research and debate, but it undoubtedly helped Amazonian civilizations a big deal. While Heiko's group only found no more than 30 settlements, he and his group were quite sure that it was only just the beginning. Heiko estimated that in 10 to 20 years, more of these cities will be found, as LIDAR is now being used as a way to virtually deforest the Amazon and see what lies underneath its thick, seemingly impenetrable dendritic canopy. What happened to them? The discovery of highly urbanized cities that once existed in the Amazon definitely sent shockwaves in the scientific community. But what was even more intriguing was that how dense the population in the pre-Columbian Amazon might have been. It's been estimated that during its heyday, a few million people lived across this vast region of the South American continent, with some believing that it may have hosted up to 20 million residents with a complex culture and sophisticated civilization. But what happened to them? Remember, in the story we had at the beginning, Spanish conquistador and explorer de Orellana and his company failed to find the great cities they had visited during their first expedition. While it can be chalked up to simply not being able to find these cities due to the vastness and hostile environment of the Amazon basin, it was strange that a highly experienced explorer like de Orellana wasn't able to find them again. They encountered some indigenous tribes, but the cities seemingly disappeared. There are many theories as to how that happened, but it wasn't the only time explorers weren't able to find any city. One theory points out the spread of smallpox among the natives. 
brought by the Europeans, smallpox also infected the indigenous tribes. Since they had no immunity, the disease spread fast and killed them quickly. In fact, according to research, a staggering number of indigenous people in the New World were wiped out because of smallpox, with some estimates reaching up to 90% or more. This misfortune may have also happened to the Amazonian tribes. Moreover, because the buildings were made of mud bricks instead of limestone like the Aztecs and the Mayans used, it didn't take long for these structures to deteriorate. Years passed, and the forest engulfed the settlements, burying it beneath thick vegetation, as its memory slowly turned into nothing but a fancy tale. How its discovery could change everything we know about the Amazon and the ancient world in general. Therefore, this big discovery made by Heiko and his colleagues has literally unearthed this secret. For sure, it's still the tip of the iceberg. The Llanos de Mojos, along with the geoglyphs in the Acre and Kuhiguki archaeological sites, were just a fraction of the total area covered by the Amazon rainforest. Like Heiko, people are absolutely certain that there are more discoveries to come. It could be a hundred more cities, or it could be thousands. It could even be more shocking than what we already know. But while that is still yet to come, these breakthroughs in Amazonian civilization research served as a mirror for us to see how we can apply this knowledge to our own time. If these ancient Amazonians were able to live harmoniously with their unique environment, why can't we? Perhaps the more we uncover the truth about them, the more we can gain knowledge not just about our past, but our present and future as well. We couldn't say for sure, not yet at least, if any of the cities that have been and will be discovered in the future were the ones in the records of De Orellana and the claims of Fawcett. However, it certainly opened the door to many possibilities, including ones that could rewrite our history. Who knows? If cities that were thought to be mythical in the past, like Troy and Bjarmeland, were later discovered to have existed in real life, there might be a chance that once glorious civilizations in the heart of the Amazon like El Dorado and Seven Cities of Gold also did. So, is the lost city of Z the next Troy? Or are they just and will remain to be figments of imagination or exaggerated versions of actual places? Let us know in the comments below. Also, tell us what you think about these amazing discoveries in the Amazon. Deepen your adventure by watching our playlists. And if you want more, just play the next episode that comes up as a suggestion on your left.